Hey guys, how's it going? I'm Sydney from PhoneDog.com and welcome to this week's episode of Phone Dog Live, the podcast or the vodcast since there is video. Thanks for being here. We're live, we're broadcasting live on Ustream. If you're if you're in the Ustream chat, hey, how's it going? If you're watching the recording of this on YouTube, thank you also for watching. Be sure and check out the description below the video because I will have a timeline there and so you can jump around. I don't know if it gets annoying that I mention that like every single week, but it just seems like every single week somebody complains about how it's the show is an hour long and they don't want to watch the whole thing. And I'm just like, there's a timeline in the description. It's completely obvious. So that's why I save it, say it every week. I don't know if it bothers you. Uh, but anyway, so I also say anyway a lot. That might also annoy you. Uh, but that doesn't matter because uh, we're going to talk about, we're going to start with the Galaxy S3. Now I know iOS 6 was announced this week on Monday and that's huge. We're obviously going to talk about that a lot. But Aaron also uh, posted his review of the Galaxy S3, and so I thought that would be kind of the more recent, fresh news. And so we're going to start talking about that. First impressions, video review, there's no, we don't have an HD video sample posted just yet, uh, but this is just the international version of the phone, so I'm assuming, hold on, let me fix this really quick, just... I'm really picky about the microphone. Uh, so I'm assuming in whenever we get like the US versions, when it comes to AT&T and T-Mobile, we'll have HD video samples. Um, but we are going to talk about it because obviously other people have posted HD video samples. So first of all, uh, if you watch, if you keep an eye on uh, Phone Dog's official smartphone rankings, uh, the Galaxy S3 is, is up there. Um, you know, on Phone Dog, when you click on the official smartphone rankings, you can see we have uh, experts votes, and then we have the people's choice votes thing. And uh, the experts, there's actually like, there's a lot of us. I think there's 12 or maybe 15 or something. And we all vote, and the computer brings it all together, and based on a points system, it will create one list. And then you can also view like our separate lists. Um, currently, the Galaxy S3 is number three on the experts list. I actually have it as number one. I think it's the best phone on the market right now. Uh, for the experts list, the X, the HTC One X is number one, which is it's like very close. Like the Galaxy S3, the One X, um, the Evo 4G LTE, those are all. I mean, if you look at them, I mean, it's almost impossible to decide which one is better and a lot of it just comes down to like personal preference I mean, I know some people who will hate just don't like Samsung don't like TouchWiz don't like Samsung hardware and so the One X to them is like the number one phone but anyway for me the Galaxy S3 is the number one phone and for the people's choice uh, list their rankings the Galaxy S3 is also number one and then you guys have the One X as number two so this is a uh, you know, it is, in my opinion, just the best one on the market. The One X is also amazing, and, and not to knock it or anything, um, but Samsung, the, the camera is just slightly better. Um, I, I feel like processor performance is slightly better. And one thing, you know, interesting that Aaron brought out in his first impressions article is that this is one Android phone, um, and, and really just smartphone in general, that he would recommend to anybody. And a lot of times, you know, and not everyone agrees with this, um, but, you know, I recommend a lot of phones to people. That's like part of my job. You know, people always want me to recommend a phone. And sometimes when they're first time smartphone buyers, I, you know, I love Android, but I'm kind of weary of recommending it because I feel like all of the awesome features they won't get, like the widgets or, you know, being able to download launchers or all the different customizations, all the things that make Android great, I feel like they won't get that, so it's kind of like a waste of, of all of this, and that maybe it would be too confusing for them. So that's kind of one of, the, one, of the thing, one of the things that I'm weary about, and apparently Aaron is too, but he said the Galaxy S3 is so consumer friendly that he would recommend it to anybody, whether it's you know, first time smartphone buyer, a power user, social media buff, a media junkie, anybody he would recommend it to anyone which i think is a really big deal i mean that's one thing that android has kind of struggled with 
and recently it's gotten a lot better with with ice cream sandwich it's more consumer friendly it's more like you can take it out of the box and just really like it it looks pretty um, they've done a, a lot better job of explaining things like widgets out of the box how to use them the way that they're categorized in the in the app drawer that they're right there that you don't have to because you know really before to add a widget you had to long press on the screen and then know to you know go to widgets, which like doesn't seem complicated, but I mean if you don't know, or if you're you're used to like an app drawer and that's it, you know you don't know to look anywhere else. And so with ice cream sandwich, you made it a lot more consumer friendly. And TouchWiz just basically expands on that. It's a lot more consumer friendly out of the box. And there's a lot of really cool features um, that consumers will like. And I mean they seem kind of like gimmicky. Um, but they're actually really cool. You know, one thing, it has a battery percentage indicator, and Aaron harps on this all the time, um, but I completely agree with him. You know, it's like the every time I review an Android phone, you know, we, we get out of the box, we do an unboxing, but then we also like to customize it a little bit because that's part of testing an Android phone is downloading the apps that you like, using those apps, you know, kind of using it in real-world situations. One of the very first apps or widgets that I always download is a battery percentage widget. It's just, boom, it's the very first one, it's what I wanna see, and so it's just, and it never crossed my mind to have the battery percentage indicator in the notification bar. Like, I, it never even entered my mind because it just, well, it just wasn't like that. I, I never thought of it, but with the Galaxy S3, it's actually there, you know, not a big deal. But he also, there's a lot of really cool features um, with the lock screen. There's lock screen options. You can have, voice options so without you know you don't have to press any buttons to to wake up as voice i mean you can say you can use voice options to wake up as voice and then use its full functionality but even without that you can just from the lock screen say you know play music and it will unlock the phone and go to the music player but you can set it to be whatever you want so you could say you know, I'm having a good day and program that phrase to open the web browser or something or to open text messaging, or you could you know, have whatever phrase you want and set that to a certain action to unlock the phone, to open a certain app or go to a certain function or something of the phone. Um, so, you know, kind of cool from there. You can have weather, which is, you know, we've seen before, but one other cool thing is that you can have a news bar instead of shortcuts if you want. So like on a lot of phones, um, the one I have is way over there, but you know, in a lot of Android phones, you have like, you know, the four shortcuts and you can use those from the lock screen. But if you don't want that, you can instead have a news bar at the bottom. And not only does it have like, you know, a headline that it kind of streams through, but you can expand it and it'll have several headlines, kind of a little summary of the article. You can select that article. It'll go to it. It's a really, really nice feature and it's actually very useful. I mean, a lot of times there's widgets that you know you can have and it shows a headline and it's, it's kind of interesting, but you know, really you have to select that or open the app to really get to all of the information, to get to other headlines besides just one headline. It's, you know, it's kind of a nice idea, but not really consumer friendly. Whereas this feature is very consumer friendly. It's not just one headline that it filters through. You can see a couple or you can expand it and see a lot more. Um, you still have the quick launch shortcuts if you want that. You can customize the messaging interface, which is again, small, but that's one of those little customization features that the average consumer, at least, you know, I can, speaking for myself, you know, before when I was an average consumer, that was one of the things that I liked. I liked those kind of like little minor customizations, not digging into the phone very deep, but kind of just changing ringtones, changing colors and fonts and things like that. And so customizing the messaging interface so you can change the color of the, of the text boxes, you can change the style or the shape, you can change the background color. It's a small thing, but it's kind of one of those consumer-friendly features. Um, there's also, in the camera, there's a buddy share feature where if you have friends like at a party or, or wherever, and uh, they all have Galaxy S3s, that's the one caveat, they all have to be on, they all have to have a Galaxy S3. But if you're on the same Wi-Fi network, when you have the buddy share feature on, when taking a picture, that picture will automatically be shared with all of those phones that are connected on BuddyShare and on the same 
Wi-Fi network, which is pretty cool. And, and Aaron brought out um, a very useful uh, scenario, a, a scenario where this would be very useful. Like say you're at a party and this happens all the time where I'm on vacation with friends and, you know, we all take pictures and everyone kind of takes pictures and, you know, you look at each other's pictures and like, oh, send that to me whenever we get back, or whenever we get home, email it to me. And like, they never do because you forget or you're lazy or like you really don't care. And so, but with the buddy share, you can right there at the party or, you know, on vacation, you automatically get that picture. So again, it's one of those just really nifty features. And uh, I agree with Aaron. It's a very consumer friendly Android device while it's still Android. You know, it's not like they took anything away from Android. I mean, you can still root it. You can still install custom launchers. Um, you can still do all this stuff, but there's so many features out of the box that consumers want, and it's just there. They don't have to worry about, you know, do I have to jailbreak my phone or root my phone, or do I have to, what do I have to install to get this, or is this, you know, you don't have to worry about that. It's just out of the box. It has these really cool features. Um, Snap, or not Snapdragon, the processor, I'm thinking of the US versions, the quad core processor, because he's testing the international version, super fast, no lag, absolutely no lag. I think it scored a 5,544 on the quadrant standard test. It's super smooth, pinch to zoom, uh, opening websites with intense graphics, with flash, with ads, all kinds of stuff running. Pinch to zoom, it's seamless. Like there's there's no problems at all. Multitasking, you can have six, seven, ten apps open. Everything just runs complete. It's it's one of those new Android phones that is completely flawless in performance, and which is great because you know that's one of the things that Apple or the iPhone users have always held over the heads of Android users. Well, you know, I may not have widgets and all the, all this other crap that you guys have, but at least I don't have to worry about freezing or force closes or, um, you know, checkerboarding or lag or anything like that. And, you know, it was, it was true. I mean, whether it bothered you or not, I mean, some people it was like, whatever, I don't care, but I mean, it was true. And so the Galaxy S3 is one of those phones we're finally getting to where it's flawless. It's just seamless. It's so snappy. It's so perfect. Uh, the camera... The camera, I'm not completely impressed with. Um, it's It's got a great camera. The pictures, they look excellent. And the video, it looks good, but um, the colors are maybe a little too saturated for me, uh, especially the bright colors. When I see videos with like, they have a lot of greens in them or blues, kind of like those, those bright, happy colors, it's a little too saturated. They kind of bleed into each other and it kind of pops too much. Um, also, the detail is too soft, and this is one of the things that um, some phone manufacturers do um, in, in an effort to make it look as, as good as possible and to reduce the noise, because you don't want to have noise, you don't want it to be grainy, so sometimes they kind of make the video a little soft, the details a little soft, just to ensure that there's no noise which is good. I don't want noise. You know, I don't want speckled dots in my video. That's, I'm glad, I'm glad they do that. But then the softness, it kind of takes away from it because the detail is just not that great. Now I will say, um, close-up shots, definitely much better. And not, you know, not where like, you know, the camera's here and, and your hand is here. I mean, not like that, but just kind of, you know, probably 10 to 15 feet away. The video, it, it looks good and the detail is excellent. But once you have kind of larger, um, larger objects, objects in the distance, you know, I mean, obviously it's kind of far away, so the detail isn't going to be perfect, but whenever you have kind of a larger picture, the detail is a little too soft. Um, also, and, and this is just me, you, know, you guys feel free to share your opinions, you know, if you've seen some of the sample videos on YouTube. Um, also the audio, I'm not impressed at all by the audio. Video quality, you know, that's subjective. Some people like overly saturated colors, the softness for details, you know, maybe that doesn't bother somebody or you don't notice that, but the audio is one thing. It's, I still get that tin can effect and uh, it's, it's kind of, it's kind of frustrating. I would expect it to be better. And, and I, I read a comment somewhere where someone said, you know, what do you expect? You, you expect it to sound just absolutely amazing. And I mean, I know it's not going to be perfect. I know it's a smartphone. We have different standards for smartphones and for point-shoot cameras, at least, you know, most of us do, 
but the tin can effect, I, I don't like that. And, you know, I, not to bring, well, obviously I'm going to bring up the iPhone, but um, I still feel like the iPhone 4S has a better camera than the Galaxy S3. And that's, you know, say whatever you want about that. You can compare the two and maybe feel differently. Um, but the, the audio on the iPhone 4S is perfect. I mean, it's perfect. It's just, well, that's pretty much the way to explain it. it. It sounds realistic. It sounds like the person is right there. There's no waviness in it. There's no tin can. Um, there's no, you know, weird effects. It just sounds like the person is, is talking and, and that's what they sound like in real life. Um, the video is also, it's, it's not too oversaturated. It's not too dark. It, the detail is, everything is very even. The audio, the video, everything is very even. Uh, I still feel like the iPhone 4S has the best smartphone camera on the market. Um, Galaxy S3 has, has a good video capture, is good. HTC One X, also good. You know, there's a couple other phones. They're, they do well, um, but I was disappointed by the video capture quality. Um, Titan 2, you know, obviously 16 megapixel camera is going to take good photos. Um, but still, I, you know, and, and you guys feel free to compare it, you know, and maybe maybe you feel differently. But uh, overall, Galaxy S3, again, like I said, it's it's my number one phone on Phone Dog's official smartphone rankings. It's my number one phone. Um, actually, right now, let me see my top. I'm going to tell you guys my my rankings. You can go to the site and see what like the experts rankings are once the list is ag aggregated. But right now I have the Galaxy S3 uh, number one, HTC Evo 4G LTE number two, One X number three, iPhone 4S number four, and HTC One S as number five. Uh, the Galaxy S3 is number one. The performance is flawless, and that's that's a big deal. Uh, the battery, it also has a huge battery. It's larger than, I believe it's larger than the Evo 4G LTE. I know it's larger than the One X, um, but it has a huge battery. And the camera is also, you know, even though I was disappointed by it, I still feel like it's a little bit better than the Evo and the One X. So uh, it's my number one phone, and uh, I can't wait till it comes to the U.S. I talked last week about how Samsung finally got it right with the Galaxy S phones. Um, Galaxy S and Galaxy S2, when it came to the US, it was all different processors, different screen sizes, different names, different form factors, different designs. It was all different and, and nobody knew that it was a Galaxy S phone. I mean, you know, besides us, but like consumers didn't know it was a Galaxy S phone. But for this, there's finally brand recognition. You will know I have the Galaxy S3. I like the Galaxy S3. You should get the Galaxy S3. Oh, you're on a different network? That's okay, my carrier has the Galaxy S3 too. Yay, we all have the same phone. I mean, it's brand recognition, and that's one of the reasons why Apple does so well, because of the brand. I mean, that's probably like 80% of the reason why people buy Apple products. Maybe maybe that's too much of a percentage, but seriously, brand recognition is huge with Apple, and if Samsung can capture that same thing, that same idea, I think it'll be huge. Uh, somebody mentioned no, no Galaxy Note and no Lumia on my top five list. Galaxy Note, I've never liked, and nothing wrong with the, I mean, obviously it's a great phone, you know, dual-core processor, HD display, yeah, it's a good phone, but that huge 5.3-inch display, I just can't get over it, and so it was previously number three, but, you know, we added, like, two or three phones to our list, and it just, it just got bumped down. Uh, Lumia 900, I did, I previously had it as number five. Um, you know, I'm, I love Windows Phone, you guys know that, and so I would love to have the Lumia 900 on my list, and trust me, it killed me to not have it on there, but, you know, I had to be unbiased, and the simple fact was that there were five other phones that were better than the Lumia 900, at least in my opinion, so, um, it's not on there, but I still, I would still recommend it to somebody as an option, um, if they didn't want Android or, you know, maybe one of these phones wasn't on their carrier, even though the Galaxy S3 will be on every carrier. But anyway, so uh, speaking of the Galaxy S3, we might have talked about this last week. I don't know if it had happened yet, but you guys might have, you probably heard that Apple requested that the Galaxy S3 be added to its case against Samsung and requested a preliminary injunction against the Galaxy S3 for it to be blocked in the US, uh, at least until the case was settled. 
and it was a big deal. It was one of those, like, seriously, Apple? I mean, come on. It was, like, just take a chill pill, okay? They're just adding everything. But anyway, we talked about that. We did talk about that, actually. I think I remember that last week. I went on a, I went on a flame war. But anyway, so, um, but the news this week is that that request has been blocked. So the Galaxy S3, at least for right now, it is, it will not be blocked in the U.S. It will be launched as normal according to their regular plans um it was kind of funny the judge lucy co we know we've talked about this before um she denied apple's request to consider the galaxy s3 uh, in a preliminary injunction saying that looking into the request would put too much strain on her court's calendar which is really just i mean it's not an awful reason but it's i mean you know you pro- she probably could have handled it. I mean, obviously, I'm not going to, you know, I'm not trying to say that she's lazy or anything. But, I mean, you know, it's a legal system and you can't just say, well, I don't have time to handle that. I mean, it seems like kind of a a nicer way of saying, like, seriously, Apple, why don't you just shut up and you just be happy that I'm accepting this okay, this case. Okay, like, it, that's totally the impression that I got from this. I could just be you know, getting wrong, like, mixed feelings, but uh, it's just funny, like, no, I am, no, okay, you already have, like, 20 phones on this list, this case isn't even relevant, I'm doing it anyway, no, I don't have time to look at the Galaxy S3, so I don't know if that was a re- if that was really what she was thinking, but that's at least what she said, was that it would put too much strain on her court's calendar, so a Galaxy S3 will be launched in the U.S., no, no worries, no delays, no... None of that. No bans. Um, let's move on to iOS 6. We spent a lot of time on the Galaxy S3. iOS 6, the other big news uh, this week, Apple introduced its latest version of the OS, and there were, I don't want to say a lot of expectations, but I think half of us expected something kind of big, and then the other half was like, yeah, we'll see some stuff, but you know, not really... Uh, and, you know, I, I think m- both sides made sense. Uh, you know, there were people that explained, you know, we probably won't see a UI refresh because, you know, it's iOS. You know, don't fix what's not broken, you know, that old saying. And, uh, you know, now that the news has come out and there wasn't a UI refresh, they were like, yeah, I mean, it's 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 iOS. They're not going to change it. It is what it is. If you want widgets, go to Android. Like, basically, that's that's what they're saying. Personally, I, I am kind of surprised. I'm you know, and I've talked about this before. The widgets thing I think is a big deal. And and you know, it's funny, I was talking to a friend of mine who is a huge Apple fanboy. I tease him all the time. It is it's hilarious. I love just saying stuff to you know get him all riled up and r- ruffle his feathers. But anyway, he's a huge Apple fanboy, and even he said you know, I like iOS and, and I'm I'm okay with it. Obviously, I love it. That's why I use it. But I just wish that there was a better way for us to get, um, I can't remember, not notifications because obviously, you know, they have a better notification system. But uh, he said just updates, like email updates, um, messaging updates. And he didn't say widgets specifically, Maybe because he hasn't really used Android at all, because he's an Apple fanboy, so everything else is the devil. But um, he, he didn't say widgets, but that's what he was asking for. Like, when he explained it, he said, you know, I know we get these pop-ups, the little numbers, and you, know, you have the notification, and, and I know we have all of that, but it would just be nice, something on the home screen where I could just see how many messages or what the message is and he was explaining this and I'm like you want widgets okay and so it was just kind of interesting like he's a huge Apple fanboy he's got everything iPhone iMac probably has an iPad I'm not sure he has the Apple sticker on his car and uh, and he was he's actually kind of getting tired of iOS just being plain Jane with not a whole lot of static update activity going on there and you know I've mentioned before you don't have to do widgets exactly the same way that Android does. Obviously, that would be dumb, and you can't do that. But find a way to make it your own. The way, you know, Microsoft Live Tile, same concept, but they made it their own. Find a way to make it your own. So, but none of that matters because we didn't see a UI overhaul. iOS 6 looks exactly the same as iOS 5. There are some new features, 
but it looks exactly the same. Uh, some of the new features, Siri can now open apps, which is, I think, a huge deal. Not really, that's kind of a... Um, but it kind of, I think, just more detailed information she can now... I, I keep saying she, and I assume it's... I know in the UK, I think it's a, it's a guy, right? It's a dude. Um, I don't know, I'm in the US, though, so it's, it's a girl. Um, but Siri can now give you more detailed information on, like, you know, sports and scores. Uh, there's also app integration in Siri, where it doesn't, like, open up the app, but it will show you information using that app, like Open Table, Rotten Tomatoes. If you ask about a certain movie, for example, it'll give you information from Rotten Tomatoes. T t tomatoes? Nice. From Rotten Tomatoes. Uh, and it will be available now in the new iPad. Uh, Facebook integration, much like uh, Twitter integration. FaceTime calls over cellular networks, which is huge. I mean, I don't think anyone really understood why that wasn't already a feature, but yeah, whatever, it's, it's a feature now. Uh, Safari, there's now iCloud tabs, where you can sync your tabs, your open tabs across all of your Apple devices. Here's one cool feature that I like. Smart app banners. Um, if you're on a website that has an application that you've installed or just has an application, whether you've installed it or not, it'll tell you. It'll have a little banner up at the top and it'll say, hey, why don't you use this website's app? Or, you know, why don't you go to the app store and download this app? And I think that's really great. One, because, you know, the apps are, are sometimes better than the website because sometimes a website on a cell phone it's just not as great, you know, whether, you know, sometimes you have to use the mobile version, so you're not getting the full version, um, or, you know, an app is just designed for a phone, and a website really isn't. We make it work on a phone, but it's not really designed for a phone, whereas an app is. So for the user, it makes it a better experience, but also for that website, um, they make money whenever, you know, whether it's, you know, free or paid, um, they get revenue from that, and so it's, it's great for those kind of people. Um, of course, I wonder if it's only official apps. It's probably just official apps. So if you go to a website and there's like an unofficial app, I don't know if it would actually... Because then if the unofficial app is paid, then the website doesn't actually make money, only the developer does. Good for the developer, sucks for the website. I don't know. No clarification on that. Uh, one of the big features is... Maps, phone dog, we do have a mobile site. People ask me about this all the time. And to me, it seems completely obvious. It's m.phonedog.com. Like, I don't know, like, I, like, do we have to tell you that? Or I don't know why there's all this confusion. But people always say, that's so stupid. You're a mobile site. You don't have a mobile version. I'm like, yes, we do. It's m.phonedog.com. Anyway, so uh, yes, it doesn't take you there directly, I know. I don't know if that's like a programming thing. If you're on your cell phone um, and you go to phone dog, it doesn't take you to our mobile site, um, but you can just type an M and it'll, it'll work. Uh, but anyway, so that's our, that's our mobile site. But maps was, uh, was one of the big things. And uh, this is like, it's a big deal that Apple did it, but in terms of like a feature, it's not really a big deal because they already had maps. So it's kind of more just a big deal that they're not using Google anymore. Which completely makes sense. I mean, Google is Android, so why would they want to use a Google service? Um, but one of the biggest things with Maps, because, I mean, for the most part, it's Maps. It, like, it gives, you know, it tells you, shows you where you are. It's got a flyover mode, which is really just a fancy way of saying aerial, aerial view. They made it look cool and all revolutionary and stuff. But when I went back and looked at it, I'm like, so this is an aerial view, basically, satellite view. It's... <laughs> Not really. Anyway, um, so they have, you know, all the basic features, but the one of the biggest thing is that it has built-in turn-by-turn -turn navigation, which is sad that that's a big deal, but it's a big deal um, because the iPhone didn't have turn-by-turn -turn navigation, and now it does. So you have built-in turn-by-turn -turn navigation, and with Siri, you can now do eyes-free, and, and not just hands-free, it's eyes-free, so you don't even have to look at it you can just, you know, you can just do it. You can just drive. Uh, but, so you, there's all these cool features. Uh, half of them are not really new because we've already seen them in other operating systems. But, uh, you know, whatever. You know, and they couldn't think of anything else. So. Um, so a lot of cool features. But what sucks is that 
they will all these features or most of the good ones will only be coming to the iPhone 4s and the new iPad. Uh, like turn by turn navigation, that will not be coming to uh, the iPhone 4. That will only be on iPhone 4s, iPad 2, and the new iPad, um, along with flyover mode, which again is dumb because flyover is satellite view and turn by turn navigation. Why? What? Why not? Why not on the iPhone 4 or the iPad, the 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 original iPad? I'm not gonna say the original iPad came out quite a while ago. I don't know why no turn by turn navigation on. I mean that's completely dumb considering that Android phones have been doing that for years. There's no reason why the iPhone 4 can't do that. It's I know why they did it. It's the whole Siri thing. We want you to buy the newest version. I get it. It's all about making money, but you're also it's kind of an insult because you're basically telling your customers, yeah, um, it doesn't work and we feel like you're dumb enough to believe that. Yeah, like they think we're dumb enough to not know what they're doing or maybe not even that. They're just arrogant enough to think that we won't care or we not. I don't even have an iPhone, but, you know, they're either insulting their customers by saying they're dumb or they're insulting them by saying, we don't care if this bothers you, we're just not going to do it. Either way, it's ridiculous. And, you know, I harp on Android fragmentation all the time. Apple is creating its own version of fragmentation, which is freaking stupid. It's just stupid, okay? All of these new features, it started with Siri. For you know, And Siri was like, okay, whatever, it's a novelty thing, it's just a gimmick, no one's going to use it. I don't know why it can't be on the iPhone 4, but whatever. But it was only one feature. So you're like, okay, whatever, we'll deal with it. But now it's a couple of new features. FaceTime over cellular, only on iPhone 4S. Turn by turn navigation, only on iPhone 4S. Um, flyover mode, only on iPhone 4S. Siri, still only on iPhone 4S. It, now they're creating their own version of fragmentation. It's not necessarily with operating system versions, it's with features and it's ridiculous. I hate fragmentation. I, I hate it when whoever it is, manufacturers, Apple, is completely ridiculous because consumers deserve to have the best features. I don't care if I bought my phone six months ago or a year ago. Why should I not get the new features? Unless it's humanly impossible, which I doubt. It is not humanly impossible for a phone from six months ago to not get an ice cream sandwich update. It's not. It's possible. And I don't care what it's possible. It is not humanly impossible for the iPhone 4S to get freaking turn by turn navigation. First of all, the fact that the iPhone didn't even have that is dumb. And now, but now that I'm going to stop, I'm going to stop before I, I, I have to stop myself. Control, control. Anyway, basically the way I feel, consumers deserve to have the best features if their phone can handle it. And they can. The iPhone 4 can handle turn by turn notification or turn by turn navigation it's i mean correct me if i'm wrong if i am wrong tell me is there some sort of programming thing that the you know processor can't handle i don't know tell me if i'm wrong but i feel like this is completely ridiculous never mind the fact that half of these features are from other operating systems anyway like some of this stuff that apple brought out has been in you know blackberry forever and android forever um, you know, freaking Windows Phone has its own form of widgets, live tiles, and yet you can't handle that. I don't know. Um, I thought one of the one of the cool new features, if a call comes in that you can't answer, iOS 6 will allow you to respond to the caller with a message selected from a list of presets, or users can also add their own message to the list. You can set a reminder where it will remind you to call them back. That's a nice feature. I'm surprised that no one else thought of that. Oh wait, everyone else thought of that. Um, iCloud tabs, where you can sync your open tabs across your Apple devices. That's totally new. Like no other web browser besides Chrome uses that. Um, Built-in turn-by-turn navigation. Oh, 2012. What a wonderful, what, what a wonderful time to finally implement that feature. Um, anyway, so that's iOS 6. Not to knock on app. I mean, obviously I'm knocking on, yeah, just take that sentence back, Sydney. Don't even, don't even try to do that. Obviously I'm knocking on Apple. I am upset that there was no 
um, UI refresh, I, I think some form of widgets or live tiles or something like that should somehow be implemented. I think it's, I think it makes sense. I think it's fair. Um, the features, you know, I get it. So maybe Android uses it and, and other operating systems use it. But if it's a nice feature, you know, why not? Okay, I get it. You know, you have to implement it sometime. Um, so yeah, it you know, you guys know I, I have I have issues with Apple. Um, but uh, you know, if you don't like Android, then iOS is just getting better. And so there you go. Now you have all these awesome features and um, yeah, that's all I have to say about that. To each his own. That's what the, I should finish on that note. To each his own. If you don't like Android or you don't like Windows Phone or if you don't like BlackBerry, iOS is a great option. And I'm not going to insult you if you want. I know I was talking about my friend earlier, how I tease him all the time. But, you know, at the end of the day, I had the, I had the iPhone 4S as like my number two phone forever. So I can't really insult it because then I would be a hypocrite. Uh, Verizon announces share everything plans coming June 28th with share talk text and data and everyone is upset about this and uh, I'm not really sure why um, I can I can kind of understand some of the issues and maybe I'm, I'm just too much of a pacifist you know I do this a lot um, there was something else oh yeah it was the AT&T T-Mobile acquisition and um, everybody was so mad about that and just completely pissed off and there was like all these petitions and outcries people were getting their pitchforks ready and i was just like yeah i mean you know it's like whatever if they want to do it you know it's fine save me money or not i don't care like what are we going to do about it like i'm totally that kind of person like well, who cares what are we going to do about it so there is greed and corruption in business <sighs> shocker i had no idea Anyway, so it's kind of the same thing with this. Yeah, I mean, I understand some people's plan prices might go up, but I mean, it's Verizon. It's outrageously expensive anyway. So it's not like we're surprised that Verizon is all of a sudden going to be even more expensive. Um, I thought that Taylor and Evan brought out some very good arguments um, as for why it's a good thing and why it's not a good thing. First of all, if you don't know what this is or if you like... What's going on? Um, so this is what it is. First, you choose a device, and each device has a monthly line access price. So smartphones are $40 per month, basic phones are $30 per month, and tablets are $10 per month. And uh, this is obviously a family plan. So you know you have multiple devices, and each um, plan with all of those phones will include unlimited talk and texting, I believe. So you pay $40 per smartphone, $30 per messaging phone or, you know, feature phone. They all get unlimited talk. It's all on one family plan. And then you pay for packages of data that will apply to all of the phones. So you can get one gig gigabyte for $50 per month, two gigs, four gigs, six gigs, eight gigs, 10 gigs, 10 gigs cost $100 per month, which is like, whoa. Um, but then all of that is shared. So it, it's really simple, actually. It's, it's not too complicated. Um, you pay for the line, and then you pay for the data, and the data is shared. Um, I thought Evan made a very good, a good plan here, assuming that his math is correct. Someone in the comments brought out that his math might be a little off. Um, maybe like the, the plans weren't displayed correctly, but... So uh, say you start out with a two-line family plan. This is without everything shared data, just you know, on Verizon's old plans. You get unlimited minutes. That's $120 per month with two lines. So $120 per month for unlimited minutes. And then $30 per month per device for unlimited messaging. So that's $60. And then it's $30 per line for two gigabytes of data. So that's another $60. In total, that would that would bring the monthly bill to two hundred and forty dollars for the two lines. Two hundred forty dollars for unlimited talk, unlimited texting, and two gigabytes of data. With the shared everything plan, you get those two lines, forty dollars per smartphone, unlimited minutes and texting is included, and then two gigabytes for however much it was, fifty maybe a little more than fifty. 
Anyway, it brings the total to $140. So $240 compared to $140, it's about $100 savings. So the shared everything plan, now you have to share the data, but as long as you feel like you can share two gigabytes, and I think that most, eh, maybe not most people, I mean, maybe four gigabytes would be better, but I mean, you know, for some people, two gigabytes would be enough. So really, it's going to save you about $100. That makes sense. And I'm like, you know what? This is great. Save somebody 100 bucks. I love that. However, Taylor brings out that that's not necessarily true for everybody. So right now... So right now, if they have four lines, it's $40 per line, $80 for six gigabytes, which is what they would need since he tracks how much data they use. So $80 for six gigabytes um, or 90 for the eight, gig eight gigabyte plan. That, that equals $250, which would really only save his family $10 compared to Verizon's old plans, except the difference is they have to share the data, which some people won't like. So it kind of just depends on your situation. You know, for Taylor, it doesn't really save them any money. It saves them 10 bucks, but they have to share the data, which, you know, some people just won't like. But for Air, uh, for Evan's scenario, it would save that family $100. So, you know, for some people, it'll make sense. And for some people, it won't. What sucks is that everyone's going to have to use it. Uh, the next time you, up the plans will debut on June 28th. And the next time you upgrade, you will automatically be switched over to share everything. So if you don't want to do it, you could decide to not upgrade and just purchase phones, no contract, and um, just buy you know packages and buy whatever you need, or just use it on Wi-Fi, I guess, if you wanted. So or you could switch carriers, which probably be better anyway, since Verizon is already kind of expensive. But I will say Verizon, you know, they Verizon is probably the most expensive carrier. Um, but I will say Verizon has the fastest data speeds, and that's, you know, I've obviously I test phones, so I've tested all of them, Verizon, Sprint, T-Mobile, US Cellular, AT&T, Virgin Boost, I mean, all that, you know, all the prepaid carriers. Um, Verizon consistently has the fastest 3G speeds and the fastest 4G speeds. That's with their most recent LTE phones going all the way back to, you know, three years ago when it was barely 3G. It was, it's always been faster. So um, if you want faster speeds, you're going to have to pay more. Um, I don't know. But to me, it's, it doesn't really seem like that big of a deal, probably because I don't use that much data. Um, my husband doesn't really use any data. I work at home, so I'm connected to a Wi-Fi network all the time anyway. So for me, it's not a big deal. But I think for some people, it is. There's just different situations. You guys Feel free to share your comments and opinions and Verizon customer service really sucks. See that I, I wouldn't know. I've never been on Verizon personally. I've only tested their phone, so I don't know what their customer service is like. But I will say I've been on AT&T, Sprint, and T-Mobile. Um, never had good customer service anywhere. Sprint sucked. AT&T sucked. Um, I think I've only called T-Mobile like once or twice. And the person I couldn't understand because... You know they outsource everything and so which like i'm not trying to be racist i'm just you know i couldn't understand the accent so um yeah i've never had good customer service anywhere i don't think anybody has good customer service anyway so oh and it's 4 45 which means we are right out open q a um i wanted to talk about some windows phone stuff um we have leaked screenshots of windows phone 8 um uh, Microsoft is rumored to be announcing its own tablet on Monday at uh, the start of nothing, just at a press conference. I thought there was an event starting on Monday, but it's not. It's just a press conference. You can ask me about that if you want to, if you want to see the screenshots. But otherwise, we will move on to the open Q&A. Uh, so I'm on Ustream. I am on Facebook. If you're on Facebook, you know what? I will even be on Twitter. Yeah, I'll even check my Twitter page like once every... 10 minutes or 15 minutes. I'd probably check it like once. Um, anyway, so uh, feel free to ask your questions. Show the screenshots. Okay, well, that was that was fast. Um, there's only three. So we have, we'll start with
Here's this one, it's the camera. As you can see, it looks basically the same, but on the left there, I think that's new, that's a zoom bar. At least I'm assuming it's the zoom bar. Um, so you can zoom in and out from the using the touch screen, which I think is a nice feature. Um, also, this is a new app. It's a data, a data app, helps you keep track of your data, which I think is, is really useful. A lot of phones are starting to ship with an app like that. And then, uh, as you can see, Skype will be integrated. So on the left, you have um, just a, you know, a profile of someone in your contacts. But so you can see there's a Skype op option, and then on the right, you can see the video call option. So there's Skype integration. One thing that you will notice um, here on this picture, um, there's no UI change. And uh, so, again, you know, I was talking about iOS before. It would be nice to see a UI overhaul. With Windows Phone 8, it would be nice to see a UI overhaul the same way because, you know, you just like seeing something new. Not anything dramatically new, because I like the way Windows Phone looks, but um, maybe like different background colors or background pictures, maybe. Um, so maybe maybe that would be a feature, I don't know. Okay, is there a future Lumia phone? You know, not, not anything solid. I mean, we've heard rumors about like a Lumia 910, um, but nothing really solid at all. And that was supposed to come in May, and it's now June, so... Why do you think Nokia hasn't made any Android phones? Their hardware is great, but software has sucked. Uh, well, since they partnered with Microsoft, um, you know, Microsoft might not be too happy about that. Why didn't they make one before? Well, they had Symbian and Amigo, and they were really trying to make that work, and um, and that was their OS. You know, they didn't they didn't do anything else, and that was what they worked on. And it wasn't until after they realized that that wasn't going to work that they looked into other operating systems, and they looked into Android, I'm sure. They just decided to go with Windows Phone. I want to get my hands on a Windows Phone. Sprint being my carrier give me barely any options. Is there hope for me in the near future? Uh, Sprint, Windows Phone, I mean, I'm sure we've heard rumors of an LG phone... LG Windows Phone coming to Sprint, um, but nothing really solid on it. Um, outside of that, no, I don't really have anything. Should I force my dad to get a T-Mobile smartphone or let him get another Samsung Smiley? <laughs> the Smiley. Uh, I reviewed the Smiley a long time ago. It was just... It was like a joke. I mean, it's it's a fine phone, but it's like the most basic phone outside of a flip phone. Um, yeah, I mean, yeah, a smartphone is obviously going to be better than a feature phone. And uh, so, yeah, I mean, try to convince him if you want to. But if he's happy with a smiley, a smiley, if he doesn't check his email, if he doesn't do any web browsing, if he doesn't need to keep track of calendars, then, you know, if all he does is text and call people, Smiley, it's perfect. It has a good um, physical keyboard. I'm available for an upgrade next month. Really wanted the Lumia 900, but I think I'll wait for Windows Phone 8. That's a good idea. Let me check Facebook. What's the difference between CDMA, like Verizon, and... Hold on. And Sprint carriers and GSM carriers, like Sprint and T-Mobile. That was a really strangely worded question, but I think I know what we're talking about. Um, so yeah, Verizon and Sprint are CDMA carriers, uh, T-Mobile and AT&T are GSM carriers. It's different technology. Um, it's based on different technology. GSM, um, a lot of people prefer because it's a worldwide standard. It's used in Europe and all over the world. CDMA is really just US only. I mean, there's some Asian countries that use CDMA, but for the most part, it's GSM. Now, there's different advantages, you know, within the U.S. between the technologies, like, for example, um, using uh, multitasking while you're on the phone, like talking and using other data apps. Um, but for the most part, people like the fact that GSM is a worldwide standard. And also, uh, GSM 4G technology is is better. You have, you know, HSPA+, plus. you have LTE, it's just, um, you know, and that's why a lot of people, again, you know, being on AT&T and 
um, T-Mobile, more AT&T because T-Mobile uses different 3G bands, which is a different story. Um, but because it's a universally accepted technology, you can buy you know, pretty much any phone in the world because most phones are GSM phones because it's a worldwide standard. You can just buy any phone and pop in your AT&T SIM card and it'll work. Um, so that's why a lot of people like it. But the basic difference is just different technology, just two different things. I hope I explained that correctly. It's, it's a lot more complicated than that. I'm trying to find the simplest way to. Um, you should do a fanboy war with Aaron. I don't know. I mean, we're both, you know, I mean, I, I like my preference is probably Windows phone, but, you know, I, I carry an Android phone. Um, he, I, you know, I guess he carries an iPhone, but he also carries an Android phone. We're, I mean, I know people like to say that we're biased, and I guess, you know, deep down we do have our own preferences, but we're not really as biased as people think, so I don't know if we could do a fanboy war. We would, would, we would be too, like, too much complimenting each other or too saying, you know what, you're right, that, that is true. It wouldn't really be a war. Um, okay, question. I'm upgrading on the big red. Should I get Galaxy Nexus now or wait till, wait till Galaxy S3? Not even a question. Um, what would you say is the best carrier overall in the U.S.? Well, like I mentioned earlier, um, I've always experienced the best data speeds with Verizon, um, just 3G or 4G, it's always been the best. That being said, um, I usually say go with GSM carriers, just because of what I mentioned earlier, it's universal, they're 4G, of course Verizon is now starting to use LTE, but LTE is actually a GSM technology. Um, but you know, being able to just buy any phone and pop in your SIM card, but really, I mean, I would say the best carrier, the one that has the best coverage in your area and the best prices, really. I mean, that's what it comes down to. You have to be practical. Verizon is extremely expensive. Um, AT&T charges for every little thing. Um, T-Mobile is, is pretty inexpensive. Sprint has unlimited data. So really, I mean, to me, the biggest thing is a price. Whichever one fits in your budget and has the phones that you want, that's the one I would say go with. Uh, whoops, sorry about that. My mom got an LG Double Play. Thoughts? Yeah, I did a review on the LG Double Play. Um, actually, wait, hold on. Let me make sure I'm thinking of the right phone. There were two phones that came out, the Double Play and the Double Take. Let me make sure I'm, I'm talking about the right phone here. The Double Play, that's the one I was thinking of. Um, yeah, I did, I did a review on the Double Play, and you know, I loved the idea. Uh, the phone wasn't exceptionally you know, great. I mean, it was, it was mediocre. Um, it was really bulky. Um, but you know, the keyboard was great. I, and I loved that idea of the dual screen and it actually worked really well. It was just, it was so cool. It was, it was so cool to use. Um, I hope that that technology is used again in the future because it was very useful. So, uh, yeah, my thoughts are, you know, great. She's, she's got a good phone. It's not, it's not like the best phone in the world. It's not the Galaxy S3, but yeah, I mean, she should have fun with it. You know, you should really look into some of those. If she's not like a tech-savvy person, you should look into all of the things you can do with that dual screen on the keyboard and um, and show her that, because it's actually really cool. Um, what do you think of the new blue on the Galaxy S3? Do you like it, or do you prefer the original Pebble Blue better? There's a new blue on the Galaxy S3? I had no idea. Uh, yeah, oh, gets a new shade, interesting, I hadn't even heard about that, so, uh, I don't know, yeah. Okay, I'm getting a droid charge for 20 bucks. Will it be okay on Wi-Fi only so my son can use it kind of like an iPod? A droid charge, uh, that is a CDMA phone, which I believe will not work without being activated. Um, there are some phones, primarily GSM phones actually, 
that will work without, you know, you can just buy them and, and yeah, use it on Wi-Fi only. Um, but the Droid Charge, it, you know, since it's a CDMA phone, I think like once you turn it on, you won't be able to use it for anything unless you activate it and you have a data plan. So I'm not entirely sure that's going to work. If your HD7 broke, what T-Mobile I know how to read. Uh, what T-Mobile phone would you get? Windows Phone or Android or BlackBerry? Still on T-Mobile? Um, well, what I really want is a Lumia 900, but I've already said I'm not going to get it because it's probably not going to be upgraded to Windows Phone 8, so I'm disappointed about that, so I'll probably just wait. Um, but the Lumia 900 isn't on T-Mobile anyway, so um, I would probably get the Galaxy S3. Um, I'd probably get that one. How could you not notice? I don't know. I don't know what to ask. You can ask me anything. Um, anything you want. I got my Galaxy S3 and I believe it's the best smartphone every ever had. How do you think Apple will try to win back the consumers now? I don't know. Um, new hardware would would certainly help with with a, a larger screen. I think a larger screen would go a long way. I think it's a bigger deal than most people think, um, because you know most diehard Android users like don't even really want a larger screen. Like again, you know my friend that I was talking about earlier, who is a diehard Apple fanboy, he doesn't even want a larger screen. But the reason that he doesn't is because he's never used one. Um, like I said, he's never used another phone besides the iPhone. So he's never used a phone with a four inch display. So to him, it seems ridiculously huge. But once you use it, you're like, wow, this is so much more comfortable. So, um, you know, I think that will go a long way to kind of give them something new to be excited about and like, wow, this is, this is a really good idea. This is genius. <laughs> you know, it's just something new to keep them excited. Um, and new hardware, you know, people always love new hardware. Camera, it can only get better. I said I still think the iPhone 4S has the best, um, is it has the best smartphone camera on the market. Um, UI overhaul, that's gone out the window. We already know that's not going to happen. So um, I think those two things really help. At this point, um, you know, iOS is really simple, and and people and some people love that, and so some people will buy it because it doesn't have widgets, because they don't want widgets. So, you know, maybe they don't need, they don't need to add widgets. Um, and then some people will buy it just because it's the iPhone. So Apple doesn't really have to do anything, just enough to keep people excited and that will be enough. iPhone needs an SD card slot and a 4.3 inch screen for me to get. Uh, yeah, that's one thing that I do hear a lot of iPhone users talk about is, actually, I have a, another friend who um, who did have an iPhone, and um, he had an iPhone for a long time, and uh, he just got, yes, no, Wednesday, he just got the Galaxy Note, and he was bouncing off the wall with how amazing it was, because he's like, it's so fast, I mean, it's so fast, because it's a 4G phone, so he's like, I go to a web page and it's like, boom, it's just there. It just loads. And I'm like, yeah, 4G, it's pretty awesome. And he's like in the screen, it's like, it's so big, which is like crazy, but it's so awesome. Like I can actually see stuff. I'm like, I know, pretty cool. And, and he's like, and it, it's got turn by turn navigation. So I wanted to go somewhere. I typed in the address, turn by turn, boom, it tells me what to do. And I'm like, I know, turn by turn, pretty cool. He was totally bouncing off the wall. So um, yeah, and that was one of the things he mentioned. Again, he's like, yeah, and if I run out of memory, I could just pop in a card and get more memory. I'm like, yep, it's pretty amazing. So he was, he was totally stoked and he had an iPhone for a long time. So it was really funny. Okay, um, it's five o'clock or six o'clock, wherever you are, it's been an hour. Um, let me get one more question uh, just because Sydney, yes or no, do you like Apple? Um, I do not like Apple as a company, but I like their products. Now, like the iPhone, I've talked before, and obviously I just talked about it. iOS isn't really for me. Just you know, I just don't like the way it looks. I don't like the functionality. It's, it's just not for me. I would recommend it to somebody else, but I just don't like it. But I have a MacBook. 
Um, I would probably buy an iPad. No, I probably wouldn't because I don't really want a tablet. Um, but Android tablets don't really appeal to me that much, but the iPad does for some reason. I don't know. Um, but anyway, basically what I'm trying to say is I don't like the company, but I think they make some of the best products. And so I, I even with that, you know, I'm not blind. I, I will say that they make great products, but I just, I don't like the company. Anyway, um, that's all. Thanks guys for coming. I hope that you enjoyed it. I hope I answered enough questions. Uh, if not, I'm sorry. You can send me a message on Twitter at phone dog underscore Sydney. But that's it. I will. Uh, I'll. I'll see you guys next week, same time, same place, 5 p.m. Eastern time on our UStream channel and on our Facebook page. Um, so yeah, I'll see you guys later. Bye.